Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Lindsay Horvath. I serve as the mayor of the city of West Hollywood. And on behalf of the city and all my colleagues on the council, we wanna welcome you to today's Juneteenth panel discussion. Happy Juneteenth, happy pride and welcome to everyone. And thank you uh, most especially to our panelists for agreeing to uh, host today's conversation and be voices uh, in this important uh, conversation conversation in this important time. And thank you also to our moderator, Jasmine Kanick, who uh, was with us in our inaugural Juneteenth event last year and uh, will be helping us have the conversation this year. Um, we had, uh, as I mentioned, our first Juneteenth discussion um, last summer. And after we decided that it was something that needed to be uh, a tradition in West Hollywood, there's uh, important conversations to be having all year long, but uh, important uh, to be recognizing this day. And it was an item I brought forward on the council. And, and I wanted to share here that, uh, you know, someone in the community said to me afterwards, oh yeah, that's your thing. And I said, my thing. Um, yes, ending slavery, um, celebrating freedom, empowering people, fighting for equality. Yes, that is my thing, but which part of that is not your thing? And, um, and so I'm glad that we're continuing this tradition of Juneteenth in West Hollywood. Um, and I'm glad to see now that it has federal recognition, which is long overdue. And uh, thanks to the fighting spirit of Miss Opal and uh, her leadership and, uh, the, and the commitment of so many advocates and activists mm -hmm. to make this, uh, this day federally recognized. Recognized. And what we know is that uh, beyond federal recognition, we need to continue the fight to act actualize uh, equity in our own communities. And that's what today's conversation will help us get a little more light into. And so um, I want to turn it over to our, to our moderator for today. Jasmine Kanick is an advocate, journalist, and political strategist who has worked at all three levels of government. I'm also proud to call her my friend. And I want to thank all of the people at Dignity and Power Now uh, who partnered with us uh, to make today's event possible and our staff who made uh, this uh, webinar possible. I'll turn it to you, Jasmine. Yay, thank you. You're faster than I than I was. I, I was I wasn't ready. I was like, oh, she's talking so fast. Hi, everyone. Happy yeah. Juneteenth, I guess. Um, I we're supposed to be happy, right? Happy, happy Juneteenth. <laughs> Happy Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth. Okay, let, let, let me get the housekeeping out of the way first, right? So uh, housekeeping, I want to thank the city of West Hollywood again for hosting this conversation. Um, it's much appreciated. I appreciate it. I appreciate being asked to come back because, you know, sometimes I'm not asked to come back. You know, people have enough of jazz when they're like, uh-uh. So it's nice to be asked to come back. So thank you. Um, and I want to give a shout out to DPN. And just DPN is an organization that is near and dear to my heart. And for those folks who are not, I'm, the reason why I'm doing it looking like this, I'm trying to get all my notes in front of me. <laughs> Uh, the, the, uh, for folks who are not familiar with DPN, um, Dignity and Power Now is an LA-based grassroots organization um, that was founded in 2012 that fights for the dignity and power of all incarcerated people, their families, and communities. Their mission is to build a Black and Brown-led abolitionist movement rooted in community power towards the goal of achieving transformative justice and healing justice for all incarcerated people their families and community. And they've been doing that since 2012 and putting it down in our community. And it's really great to see them uh, working with the city of West Hollywood and working with Mayor Horvath. So big up to the community power now, DTN for short, for those of us who know it. Um, so today's discussion is gonna be, uh, obviously today is Juneteenth and we were tasked with having a public discussion around racial injustice. Um, you know, we could talk about that from now until eternity, but we'll try to, we'll try to cover as many um, aspects of racial injustice um, as we can during the next 60 minutes that we have. Uh, we have a great panel um, of folks from DPN, and I'm going to first go through and introduce everyone before we 
jump into our conversation. So I'm going to start with uh, Ms. Helen Jones. Hi, Helen. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> And Ms. Helen Jones Phillips was born and raised in Watts, California, and is the mother of John Horton. Um, she's also a civil rights activist and the founder of Head High Entertainment. In 1998, Helen started a music label to help young people develop their voices, music, and writing skills, and to help them turn their lives around. On March 30th, 2009, Helen's son, John Horton, was murdered, beaten to death by 10 LA County Sheriff's deputies at the Men's Central Jail in Los Angeles. His death was covered up um, and listed as a, a staged suicide. Since the murder of her son, Helen has been fighting for justice and accountability for all and standing with other families who have been victims of police killings. And I can tell you that she has definitely been a warrior in that struggle. And we're so happy to have you with us, Sister Helen. Yes. Uh, James Nelson is the Senior Advocacy Lead at Dignity and Power Now. Uh, James was confined within the prison industrial complex at the age of 19. During the 29 years inside Soledad um, State Prison, he actively participated in self-help programs like Life Cycle and DPN Success Stories, where he became close with DPN board member Richard Edmund Vargas. Upon James's release, he immediately became involved in Dignity and Power Now and quickly found himself working full-time as an organizer where he shares this story daily with other formerly incarcerated people that he does. And we love us from James. Hey, James. <laughs> Sahara White. I have not seen Sahara since we were working on Mr. R, but it is so nice to see this young sister, Sahara. Sahara White is a single mother. She's a college student and a field organizer with Dignity and Power Now. She's dedicated to ending mass incarceration. Due to her life experiences, her father being illegally sentenced to 25 to life in 2001, and her partner being killed in LA County Sheriff custody in 2018, Sahara is committed and dedicated to the fight for justice, community healing, and holding sheriff and police accountable for their actions. Sahara is a student working towards her BA in social justice and a minor in mental health. You go, girl. She volunteers with other social justice and healing. She volunteers with other social justice and healing justice organizations like Justice LA, another favorite, Black Lives Matter LA, another fan favorite, ALMA, ALMA Backyard Farms, and the Curb Coalition. Sahara is so nice to have you. Welcome. Thank you. So we got all that. Everybody feeling good? Y'all feeling good? Yes. Y'all off mute, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, I thought we would first start off the discussion by uh, clearing some stuff up because I actually heard someone say that Juneteenth was was the end of slavery. And I was like, well, not exactly. Um, Juneteenth is the commemoration maybe of the formal end of slavery in the US. Um, but uh, it dates back to June 19th, 19, I'm sorry, 1865, when the news of the Civil War's end had finally reached um, the enslaved Black, Black Americans who were living in Galveston, Texas. And this was more than two years after the Emancipation Proclamation had been signed. And so those um, about 200,000 men and women and children in Texas learned of their freedom on that day. And that's where we derive our Juneteenth um, celebration and our, our Juneteenth, our Jubilee celebration from. Um, I think we can all agree, right, that making Juneteenth um, a national holiday is probably lo is long overdue, but that, you know, there are some lessons that we can take from Juneteenth um, and the history of Juneteenth in terms of the conversation around racial injustice that is happening today. Um, and for example, that if you look at Juneteenth, right, you know, the issue was you had a policy that had been um, established. And what was the policy? The policy was the people are free, the black people are free, but because there was no enforcement um, and there was no advocacy, there were 200,000 
people in Galveston, Texas who never got got the word, right? So rights without, you know, having strong, empowering institutions just end up being empty words. So I guess I'll start off by asking, um, I'll start off with this. So for many of us, the emancipation of Blacks um, from, uh, from one form of slavery meant that we went right into another, right? Whether it was Jim Crow, mass incarceration, segregation, um, structural racism in the housing system. Um, and I could go on and on and on in terms of how, you know, things are, 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 are a little better, but not that much better for Black people in America. So when you hear Juneteenth and you are seeing, for example, this year in 2021, all of the celebrations, you know, it used to be June 19th would go by and nobody knew anything but us. And now everybody is hip to Juneteenth. What, what, you know, what, what comes to mind for you? Are you excited? Does this mean, you know, job well done? You know, we ain't got nothing else to do. We got us, uh, you know, another national holiday. Like what comes to mind for you all when you think of Juneteenth? I'll go with you, Ms. Helen. You can start us off. Okay. Well, what comes to mind to me is that it needed to be celebrated. You know, um, it needed to be to, for everybody to know about this day and to know that, like you said, it wasn't the, the first day that we was free, but it was the day that, that you know, for the folks in Texas to um, be free too, for them to know about it also. So um, what comes to mind to me is that it needed to be celebrated. It needs to stay celebrated. It needs to, um, need to be in the schools for everybody can know about this day. Uh, our kids need to know about it. Our grandkids need to know about it. You know, we just need to make sure that this day um, relevant and everybody can share this day and know about this day. Shane. What do you think of, I think you're on mute. Uh, I think you are on mute. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. So there's a little All bit right. of an echo. I know. I'm hearing an echo. I've been hearing it the whole time. Oh, wow. That's horrible. Okay. That's horrible. Okay. We're going to have to figure that out. While you figuring that out, we're going to go to Sahara. <laughs> so, Sahara, what do you think of when you hear Juneteenth? Um... Juneteenth, what comes to mind for me, um, I get a little upset, actually, to be quite honest with you, because I am 23, and I only heard about Juneteenth about two or three years ago, so I'm mm -hmm. like, how is it that I'm Black, and I'm barely hearing about this holiday, or this celebration, or this commemoration, and my whole life, I've been celebrating July 4th, that has nothing to do with my the freedom of my people but the oppression of my people so I get kind of angry initially when it comes to it um but then I have to stop and think like I get excited too now that I put some thought into it and how to really take a step back and analyze um because it was like a win for us um of course we are still in a modern day slavery but it's a step closer to the freedom that we're trying to achieve. Um, so yeah, that's what that's what comes to my mind for Juneteenth. Um, and I don't know if James is still working or not. Are you still working on your connection, James? Yeah. 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 The mic up loud? Too high? Is, yeah, or I don't know, maybe you might have to log off and log back in. I'm not really sure why the feedback is so, um, yeah. There was a suggestion that came in if you're using a phone and a computer to turn them either the mic off on your computer, the sound off on your computer, or the sound off on your phone so you don't hear it twice. Are you using two? Um, are you just using one? Oh, wow. Hmm. Uh, do you have ear earplugs that you can use maybe? 
We'll see if that if that helps. And while he's doing that, I will tell you, Sarah, you are not the only one. Bro, I grew up in Hermosa Beach, and, and there was a lot of things I didn't know until I started hanging out with the Compton side of my family. And I was like, there's a lot of things I didn't know. And I, I know that feeling where you're like, I didn't know any of <laughs> any of them about any of this and I think for us black folks whose grandparents made that trip from the south here my grandparents my my maternal grandparents were from Texas so this was a big deal for them because they were from Texas we you know a lot of us our parents our grandparents came here from South Carolina they were trying to escape the south right that's why they came to California so they brought uh, Juneteenth with them, you know, and so yeah. James, let's see how you sound now. Oh, wait, did he log off? I think he logged off. He's gonna have to come back and join. So we'll keep talking, and when James comes back, we're we're gonna um, we're gonna we'll we'll put him into the conversation. So one of the 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 things that things that has been talked about um, since the uh, since we've moved forward with making Juneteenth a national holiday, it's just over and over you hear about the work that still needs to be done, right? I know it's something that I continue to talk about. Um, I um, heard Mayor Horvath um, mention it earlier um, in her opening remarks. And so when we look at um, mass incarceration, when we look at, you know, um, you know, the government sponsored displacement of, of black folks. When we look at all of the issues that are facing us right now, um, in you know, what do you see as being our 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 number one fight? Like what is our fight still today in 2021, right? Because you hear people say we ain't free. I'm the first one to say we ain't free. Okay. So what is our fight right now? Like what, what is it that we, um, we need to be discussing, working on, moving towards, organizing around? What do you see? Either one of you, you can jump in whenever. We having a conversation y'all. And when James comes, he gonna join the conversation too. Well, I swear, what I see is we need to, it need to be equal for what's good for the police and law enforcement should be good for us um we don't get no account uh, no justice and no accountability when it comes to law enforcement you know all the rights that the policies all the rights they um that they set up um for us is all works for the law enforcement though nothing really worked for us and that's something that truly need to be changed is um, law enforcement need to be held accountable for all the crimes they commit and, you know, trying to hold the citizens back for, from our rights, but then they make all the rights for law enforcement to where it works for them and nothing works for us. That's something I see that really truly need to be changed. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, just kind of echoing that, when you asked the question, I was sitting here thinking, right, and my mind just started running like all the different things like we currently are working on and advocating for, um, like getting Measure J fully funded and stopping the $140 million for the pre-child services that um, the governor tried to put to the probation department and try to fund community-based organizations, um, mental health for our community members. Um, but it seemed like just like just those little things um, yeah, like just the little things that were coming to my mind of like, you know, here, this is what we need to do. But like the bigger picture overall is like, yeah, these are all the little things we need to do. But the big focus is tearing down this malfunction people call a system and creating a real system that actually helps and works for community members and not just benefits the elites or the white supremacy or the police or this big overall system that constantly continues to oppress us and put obstacles up for us that doesn't allow us to advance further in life, not only for ourselves, but for our children. Um, yeah, that's that's what comes to mind for me. And I see James is back on, so I don't know. I see that too. Hey, yeah. James. Hey, I'm back, I'm on now. <laughs> oh, you sound so much better too, brother, okay. 
So we want to know what you think about this Juneteenth holiday and Juneteenth in general. And also, what do you see as our big, um, you know, our big fight? Like, what is it? Because obviously the work is not done. We still need to continue, right? So for you, what is the struggle? What is the fight? What are you um, focused on? Yeah, thank you, Jasmine. Yeah, uh, I think it's great, you know, uh, folks finally recognizing Juneteenth, right? <laughs> but uh, I also think too that uh, 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 it's a, uh, almost like a distraction, you know, like, like you give a kid something to pacify him <laughs> and hope he just be quiet and he just go to sleep. Uh, I take it like that, you know, because uh, knowing uh, how the system was um, developed and knowing the agenda that the system pushed and knowing that the people that's oppressed from it. So, uh, you know, but again, I think it's great for folks to uh, uh, acknowledge uh, Juneteenth and, uh, and have more dialogue about the real history of it because we have always been lied to from day one, right? Uh, uh, I could go on and on about how that started, but I won't. But uh, yeah, I just think that uh, uh, we need to just stay focused on the work that we're doing and uh, uh, being a part of the change that we want to see as far as dismantling in this justice system, you know what I'm saying? That so many people have been like uh, uh, victimized from and, and just on a continually basis, you know, locally and on a state level, you know? Uh, and then though, even like uh, 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 we're getting uh, um, some of these bills passed, some of these campaigns passed, you know, this round of the elections, you know, uh, we went in the community and uh, other folks too, and rally folks to really vote, right? To show people how important our votes are, right? And now, you know, we pretty much won everything across the board, but at the end of the day, after you even win, you just can't sit back and think that it's gonna take place, right? right. You still gotta go and make sure that somebody's gonna be accountable and they are gonna be transparent, you know, because that's what we've been lacking, like <laughs> from, uh, 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 before uh, 13th Amendment was written was transparency because we've been lied to all the time from the beginning, you know, and we continue to be lied to. But uh, I'm just glad to be amongst so many great people across the country, you know, that speak up and, 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 and be a part of the change that they want to see. You know, uh, you see earlier, I had a, ch a problem coming on to the Zoom call. You know, I'm still impacted by the system, you know, uh, about the trauma that they caused me because I've been home seven years now, but. Uh, um, we still have challenges with the technology and stuff like that. But, you know, uh, I'm just great to be here with DPN, to be uh, a, a part of the people out here in our communities that's bringing some change for our people. But yes, it's still a lot of work to go because I remember with the jail fight plan here, you know, the BOS told us that uh, the train had left the station. That was even after they received uh, uh, positive results back from this uh, uh, contaminated yeah. soil that caused valley fever. Right, but uh, because we was uh, 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 a bunch of uh, uh, resilient people that was going down there fighting and fighting and fighting, not only did we win that jail fight plan, we switched this whole narrative here in LA County to talk about alternative to incarceration. So again, just because we get something don't mean that we can sit down. We gotta still make sure that these things are being implemented because as you heard <laughs> what uh, the sheriff said the other day about his solution to the problem at Venice, right? That's not right. nowhere close to alternative to incarceration. So again, we got a lot of work to do. Right. And to your point, um, James, look, um, you know, I started off the conversation reminding people that those 200,000 men, women, and children in Galveston, Texas did not know that they were free, right? So to your point about we can have all the policies in the world, but if there's no enforcement, if there's no implementation, what does it really mean, right? Because for the two years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, they not only were they still enslaved, but their owners knew that they were free and, and allowed them to continue to think that they were enslaved, right? Just crazy. Yeah. So, I often think about um, 
wow, what our ancestors would think today, like if they could see all this stuff today, like if my grandparents, my great grandparents, my great great grandparents, I mean, never in their wildest dreams would they have imagined black president, half black president, uh, uh, Juneteenth holiday, um, you know, some of the advances, some of the things that we've been able to do in, in, this, in this struggle, you know, our grand, our ancestors, they, they tried, but they couldn't get it done. And I feel like we picked up the mantle and we're like carrying it across, right? We're going to keep going. And the generations um, coming after us will pick it up from us and take it as far as it needs to go. I think one of the underlying things in everything that you're, everyone is saying is that there's a lot of anti-Blackness in America. And that didn't end with the end of slavery, right? And that anti-Blackness, it, you know, it permeates through our criminal um, justice system just about at every level, right? From policing um, to prosecution to the prison sentences. And I think a lot of us would agree, and I want you to, to touch on this, about the role in mass incarceration as sort of being maybe like a reincarnation um, of slavery, right? And um, not only is it obviously, you know, state sponsored, but it's um, economically incentivized um, institutional terror and it destroys the lives of black people um, in this country. And it is part of the reason why when we have discussions about racial injustice, the criminal justice system is always a huge part of that discussion because it is what um, it is what you know stops our family, stops our people from moving forward, right? At every single level, whether it's because you took the mother, you took the father, you broke the family up, you you know the, the unfair sentencing, and so in the spirit of liberation and freedom, um, you know, when we look at mass incarceration up against Juneteenth, you know, for you, you know, what would you like to see 10 years, 10, 20 years from now? Like, I'm sure you don't want us to still be in the same struggle with the board of supervisors and the sheriff, right? Where should we be at 10, 20 years from now as a nation, as a state, as a county, as a city, um, I feel like we're taking baby steps towards, you know, making these huge changes. But where do the three of you see us going? Yeah, uh, I'll go first. I say in, in 10 years, uh, I, I always tell our coworkers when we had that discussion, in 10 years, uh, we hope to be out of work. We hope that um, the social justice system is so fixed that we out of a job. You know, that would be the ultimate goal. But uh, I, I just feel like in, in 10 years, uh, I would at least uh, 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 want to see uh, uh, the ATI implementation like in full blossom across the country, you know? Well, explain what ATI is for people who may be watching and don't know. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, ATI is alternative to incarceration that um, the Board of Supervisors and the people here in LA had uh, fought and pushed for, and uh, it passed in um, being implemented here in LA. And uh, alternative to incarceration is where folks can go and, uh, 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 um, and get services for whatever uh, 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 their uh, uh, ailments may be instead of being um, jailed. Because at a high rate, people was being jailed for their mental illness. People was being jailed for being houseless. You know, people was being jailed for many reasons that they shouldn't have been jailed and they should have been able to go get some type of uh, uh, um, treatment uh, in their own communities, you know, rather than going to jail. So that's what alternative to incarceration is. And as we've seen too, uh, even before George Floyd murdered, right? Uh, uh, this here was already the narrative here in LA but after George Floyd murder and all the uprise across the country, the whole country was asking for what LA had already then passed, the alternative to incarceration, the defunding of the police. You know, so I, I would like to see and want to see uh, the alternative to incarceration uh, 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 program over the whole country. That way, 
people can really get the service that they need because we know why the criminal justice system was developed, right? We know about the history of LAPD, right? If you go and read as far as why they was brought on board to do the job they do. And now they still doing that, right? They doing that and, and even on the state level, they doing that. You know, and, and I feel that the problem really is, is the unions. It's the unions because the unions get so big to where don't nobody want to mess with them, right? With the CC, CCCPOA on the state level, you know, uh, um, they used to pay for their officials to go in to pass all the bills that they wanted. So that's why the mass incarceration was taking place. That's why people was getting like over sentenced, you know, and, and it, it always have been a difference in when you're talking about sentences, right? Because um, do you pick up a so-called gang member from the neighborhood, they gonna give him time for the crime that they said he did and because they say he a gang member. But here it is, we have police that's known gang members and no gang enhancement never come up against them. So it always have been a difference in the um, laws um, for, for us okay. and, and other folks. So, you know, so, but in 10 years, I would like to see um, the ATI implemented across the country and uh, police defunded and those funds reallocated back to the community from which they was taken from. See, a lot of people don't realize and remember that a lot of programs in the communities were stripped, you know, and that's when that budget shift in their favor, you know, and 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 this this is why we're here now, you know. So uh, now we having conversation that folks didn't want to have for years, you know. So. Uh, I just look to have some more of these conversations so we can just be in a better place in 10 years. Helen Sahara. I can go next. Um, definitely agree with James um, with the ATI being implemented uh, across not just LA County or California, but across the, the nation. Um, and it's exactly what it is, alternatives to incarceration to help our people, not punish our people. Um, but I think another thing I would also like to see um, that I feel is realistically achievable within the next 10 years um, is police being held accountable for when they kill somebody in the streets and not just in the streets, but even our loved ones that are dying inside these institutes. Um, I would like to see an outside body of people to investigate the sheriff's department and not them do their own investigation on our loved ones and determine how much their body parts equal when it comes to them being the ones responsible for their death. Um, I'd like to see more transparency. I'd like to see more health and wellness um, for our communities because when stuff like this happens, our loved ones, like our family members, like we even ones who have to hustle up the money to bury our loved ones and to, we have to hustle up the money to bury our loved ones to figure out what we're gonna do when they do die and share for police custody, um, how we're gonna pursue that. Like while meanwhile, the people who are responsible and had played a part in the death of our loved ones are still working, are still, getting like a paid vacation because they're still getting paid when the investigation is going on while we're over here suffering and not just financially or emotionally but mentally and that doesn't only take a toll on like us physically but on our children like our generations that we're bringing up and i could speak on this because like like, like this is this is my life like i have a whole four-year-old now almost five-year-old and she talks about death versus having fun you feel me like because her daddy fell victim to this system this malfunction that we call a system and died in shared custody so now it's like now my baby like I got to figure out how to answer these certain questions and to raise her and to do these certain things when and this is all on me like you guys are responsible for this and now I have to do this on top of trying to take care of my own mental health and trying to figure out what happened and all this other stuff so I would like to see more transparency. I would like to see programs implemented outside of the county for these families to deal with everything that they're going through, that we're going through. Um, I don't believe it's like, it's not right. It's not right at all. And it's not just the person themselves, but our, our babies that are growing up in this, you know, and that trauma, that generational trauma, like 
my my baby girl she it started for her young she started at one years old with this and she's growing up in trauma so put some funding into these services to to help my daughter to deal with this to learn how to deal with this so it doesn't affect her when she's 18 19 20 21 and she's older and labeled as an adult and something may happen and instead of you oh you have mental you have mental health issues or this this and that no you could put the funding into dealing with it now so she's good when she's older um that's what i would like to see more more transparency more services for these families and these police these sheriff's department and these judges being held accountable um i'd also like to see the rate my judge site that um we just launched from justice la um to for folks to start using that to start putting these judges on blast and showing that they play a big uh, part in the the work that they do too like you sit there you sentence somebody um for a crime they didn't commit james right he, we got living proof right here on this on this call you sentenced to a crime he didn't commit and you know you was wrong and you get paid to do that like you're there's no accountability held for you i think it's under the 11th amendment like they it's like they can't be touched what human being on this planet earth does not have to abide by the law it don't make no sense you just because you have a badge or because you make some odd x amount of money in the year and because you you hold this this position of power that the people are supposed to put you into trust to protect us and you're doing nothing but hurting us you sir need to be held accountable that's what i what i what i want to see and i know that we can see within these next 10 years um and i'm gonna leave it with that and i'll pass it to mama helen <laughs> sarah thank you um i would like to see um mass incarceration stopping for our youth and for our family members. Um, I wish they would put more money into keeping our youth out of when they get in trouble instead of jailing them, give them help because they don't know the problem that goes on with our youth today, what our youth have to deal with, what our kids, kids have to deal with. And I wish it was, um, they, we could just stop them from jailing our, our kids, we could stop them from jailing our youth. Because if we stopped them from jailing our children and stopped them from jailing our youth, our prisons wouldn't be so full. Because if they if they would stop this problem when they're young, when they're kids, and when they're and when they're teenagers, our prisons wouldn't be so full of, of, of our young folks. Um, we have a um, um, we have a program that's starting in DPN um, in the second week of July that's called Stop uh, Project Stop the Lines. And this is to help um, impacted youth, unimpacted youth that need the help. And this is what we need to do is, I really feel is if we stop the system from taking our kids, putting this money back into our kids, instead of when they get in jail, you wanna spend thousands of dollars to feed them in jail, put them on them uh, funky clothes that you give them while they're in jail and um, not teaching them nothing. They're not learning nothing. They're being ripped apart from their families, um, ripped apart from their siblings. And then when they come out back out to the system, back out to the street, they lost. You know, they don't even know what to do. Their minds are all already um, messed up from the, the time that they spent incarcerated because there's no counseling in there. There's real, no real teaching in there for our youth. They just destroying our youth and getting them ready for this prison cycle. So I just truly feel like they, with that money that they're taking, um, well, they're willing to spend 10, 20, 30, 40,000 on us and our children while they're incarcerated. But when they're out on the street and need help out on the street, you don't wanna provide a dime for them, not even for a bus pass not even to keep our bus stops safe for our children to be able to sit on the bus stops in, 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 our, you know, in our neighborhoods. And instead of the police, you know, riding by us, looking at, like, looking at us coming from somewhere else and coming to our neighborhood, looking at our children like they don't belong in their own neighborhood instead of treating them bad, you know, riding by them, um, mad dogging them and, and um, disrespecting them, um, help them. 
you know, but our, but our police force, our police, our, our law enforcement system is set up to degrade us, to make our children feel worse, make them feel bad, make them feel like they're they not worth nothing. And I just feel like if we, if we can stop our system from building our kids up for these prisons, then we can slow th this prison rate down because their minds would have been changed, the help would have been there before they even become adults. Thank you. Okay. So great answers, everyone. So let me see if I, if my, you know, let's see how good my memory is. So James wants to see alternatives to incarceration implemented in 10 years. The heroines police accountability and um, Ms. <laughs> you just went, and that, not my mind just went blank. <laughs> hey, yours was the children, right? Treat kids like kids, right? And stop, you know, arresting um, and, and jailing our youth, right? So we've talked a lot about the criminal justice system. And so we're going to flip it a little bit um, because all three of those things require something of us as Black people. What? It requires us to still be living here in LA County. Yes. So let's talk about gentrification and housing because none of what you say matters. If you get priced out and have to move to Las Vegas, you have to move to Texas, you have to move reverse the trip that your grandparents took and move back to South Carolina, right? And so, and, and we know that, you know, the displacement of people of color has been going on since the founding of this country, right? They, they displaced the folks that were here. They displaced the Africans that were there and brought them here, okay? So this is what this country does, right? But here in LA specifically, we are in a real struggle to stay in our communities. And as I tell people, there's only one zip code in LA County that has um, a black population that is growing. And as the zip code of 90013, which encompasses Skid Row, because that's where more and more of us are going, right? And so how do we, in the spirit of Juneteenth, in the spirit of wanting to fight the system and change the system, how do we, as a collective people, make sure that we are here for all of this, right? You wanna be here to see ATI impl implement it, right? You wanna be here to see that the sheriff are held accountable. You don't wanna be across the country, you know, in Georgia or something. You wanna be here in LA. And this is a real struggle for our people right now. What, you know, we know that black people make up the majority of the unhoused people in LA County. We are being priced out of our neighborhoods. And this struggle goes hand in hand also with mass incarceration, right? You know, whether it has to do with the fact that apartment owners won't rent to you if you have a, a criminal record that they don't approve of, right? I can go on and on how, you know, you know mass incarceration and criminal justice um, system affects our housing, right? you're in public housing and you get accused of doing something or your child gets accused of doing something, they take your public housing from you and that leaves you displaced. So we got a lot of issues when it comes to housing. Where are you seeing us in 10 years with housing? How are we going to still, how, how does Jasmine get to still be here and Helen and Sahara and James, how do we still get to be here to see all of this happen? Yeah, um, I think uh, like people just need to be more educated because I remember when that bill came out around um, uh, the the the, uh, uh, the treatment from the landlord. It was I want to say was it Prop Ten that came out um, not long ago, a couple of years. Uh, it was around housing, and uh, it was to help people uh, to uh, to uh, uh, maintain their housing and. Uh, and, and, and it, it didn't pass, it didn't pass. And I knew like people I know and the community I come from, if people had to know how to vote, and then that's another thing, when people go vote, they really have to be educated because it could be really tricky. 
You know, when you Absolutely. think that, yeah, you think you that you voting for something in favor of you yourself or your community, and come to find out, you voted to go against what you actually needed. So I just think that uh, 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 educating folks, you know, educating folks uh, in the housing uh, 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 issues in LA, educating folks uh, 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 down here in the BOS, in, uh, in, the, in the COC meeting, you know, just educating folks in, in spaces where they can come and take up some spaces, you know, and, and, and people could see how impactful that they stories can be. You know, uh, the other day uh, somebody spoke and, and say that uh, um, how impactful the COC meeting was that day that the family spoke uh, 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 who had just lost a family member to share violence, right? But that's what we need folks to do, you know, just don't stay isolated, stay alone, come out and be a part of something to get your story out there. And then uh, us as orgs, as communities, it, it, it fall on us you know, to educate our people, you know, especially when we want to know the truth, you know, because um, they got some mm -hmm. like us that go to our community and lie to our people. So <laughs> we got to be uh, 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 wise and educated enough to really educate our people, you know, and, I agree. and give them the honest, uh, uh, the truth, you know, uh, uh, what, 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 uh, um, how the uh, community can uh, benefit how to be uh, the, uh, you can stay a part of your community and not be tricked and move out to other outskirts area that they trying to get everybody uh, pushed out to so they can move back into LA. Right. So I'm hearing that we have to be at the table because if we're not at the table, we're on the menu. And if there's no space for us at the table, we need to bring our own folding chair and just squeeze in between people and sit our asses down, right? That's what I'm hearing from you, right? Okay, so you're exactly right. So Sahara and Ms. Helen, I mean, they got $3,000 singles and $5,000 one bedroom apartments. And, um, you know, every time I used to, make this joke but it's not really a joke every time a white person used to move into my neighborhood the rent went up so you know what we gonna do because we in a fight for our lives right now in order to try to stay in this state and this and just so people understand the majority of black people in the state of california live in southern california we live in san bernardino and riverside in la county we are dead. the majority of us in the state are here so so what, what are we going to do, ladies? What, what are we going to do? Mama Helen, do you want to? Okay. <laughs> well, well, I feel we I need to come loaded. together. We need to come together and fight, and fight for our housing, just like we fighting for everything else. And I mean, really push it. Because like you said, Jasmine, if we don't stop this, we won't be here to change what's going on in L.A. We would have to come away from somebody somewhere else. And like, like a lot of us doing right now, we would have to come from somewhere else to try to keep this, to try to stop this. So we really need to like really put this on our agenda to where we need, really need to come together and really change this. Because you're right, we will, everybody will be pushed out of Los Angeles because of, like I said, two bedroom is, I know some people paying like 22, 2300 and really can't afford it. I mean, don't have food, got to, you know, got to hustle for food, kids clothes, and it's sad. It really is sad. I mean, and, and it is really driving people to skip rope and, and people don't mm -hmm. really, they don't believe it because they don't see it, but it's, it's, it's really happening and it's, and it's sad. So we do need to come together and really um, put this on our agenda to make sure that we are here to, to make these changes in LA. And I would also add to that before you go, Sahara, that our allies and our friends need to be with us in that struggle too. I mean, I know they're helping us with, you know, fighting the criminal justice system, but help us stay here too. Don't do the things to push us out of our neighborhoods. <laughs> do the things to support keeping us here, right? I, I, it's very funny to me because you know, people, I moved into this neighborhood for the culture and the, well, you just moved the culture out. You just priced the culture out. <laughs> so 
<laughs> Echo Park, uh, <laughs> Silver Lake, right? So, there. What do you? What say you? Um, honestly, I wanted them to go first so I could try to think of something else. But honestly, I'm just really amplifying what uh, James and Mama Helen said is just continuing the fight putting, inserting ourselves into those spaces, inserting ourselves into those conversations. Um, us as community members, just amplifying other people's voices, um, advocating, showing up to events if you can, if not signing petitions, if they're sent to you, um, just really getting involved because if you don't, then they're just gonna push us out like they continue to do. So um, that's, yeah. that's really what I feel like because even like myself, um, I've been going through like a housing situation for a while and stuff now. So like, um, I was almost in that position too, you know? So it's like, it's starting from like, it happens young and it's older folks too that are homeless and stuff. So it's like, and it's expensive as hell. Like it's so, it's ridiculous. And a lot of these places, it's like a thousand dollars just to even rent out of a room in an apartment. And there's so many restrictions around it when it preach, comes to that. Girl, preach. Yes, mm -hmm. like, and it's like, Amen. These guys, they, they, they know worse, they worse as the police because they, they don't care. Like they just don't care. And it's all capitalism. Like it's all about money. So it's like, Stop worrying about the money. Worry about the actual person and help this person. Like, I don't like. I don't know what else to say but to keep on fighting. Like, you you got to put yourself in this position, and you just got to do what you got to do to help yourself and these other people because they're not gonna do it for you. They're not gonna. They're not gonna help them. Like, they've already shown that they had the money, like the funding. You've been. You were put into this position to to help these people, right? Newsom, cough, cough, and what the the houseless the homeless the houselessness has risen since he's been in a position since he's been mayor so it's like if you're not doing what you're supposed to do sir you need to leave to let somebody else come and step in and do what they need to do to help these people because we're still here like we're still living we're still breathing and i don't it just frustrates me so much because i don't know how you can be human and not care about a human like it just does not make no yeah. sense to me. Like you act like just because you're in this position that you you're not gonna be homeless when like you can't be homeless one day or something. Like like your family member can't be in this position or something. And then what? And then you want people to help that person, right? But like I, it just it just doesn't add up. That stuff needs to start adding up for me. And in order to do that, we need to take action and to put ourselves in these positions and in these spaces and do it for us since they're not doing it for us um yeah I agree and let me just tell you so because I you know I frequent um Skid Row the average age is about 50 for us on Skid Row right mm -hmm. you know when I was there today I just saw fathers and brothers and uncles and cousins and nephews along with the women right but I'm just thinking because black men make up the majority of, of Skid Row right and it's just it's so devastatingly um, sad but I share the same passion with you as we get ready to wrap up I just want to know would you rather have a Juneteenth federal holiday or reparations and if you get your repar if reparations is your choice what's the one thing you want out of reparations as a black person in this country if that's your choice like if you rather have a holiday then okay we don't you know that's your answer close all the prisons down and pay my people <laughs> So you want reparations and you want the prisons closed and your people pay. Okay. Miss Helen, you want a holiday or you want some reparations? Uh, we need them both. But since we can't have them both, I say help the people. Help the people. Because, yeah, help, the, help our people. Help the people. Because people first. People first. Okay. Yeah, in my scenario, it's only one or the other. Yes. James, reparations, national holiday. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think uh, 
I, I would uh, 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 say reparations, right? I say reparations because it would be going back into something that was promised, right? And that's been the problem with this country has been so many broken promises and, and outright lies. So I think that's just a, be the beginning of, of, of a, a, a great path for uh, possible healing. You know, so I would say reparation because, uh, you know, black folks, we make up our own holidays anyway. <laughs> I was just about to say that reparations yeah. holiday. <laughs> right, right. As as Sister Molly Bell would say, reparations in memory of our ancestors. Well, here's a couple of things I want to leave you with. One, our illustrious mayor, who should be soon out the door for my LA people, has put LA in this coalition of cities looking at reparations. We need to be at that table. I don't need no white people trying to figure out what my reparations are, right? As a black person, I think we need black people at that table. Two, we saw with the Juneteenth bill, it is clear that they can pass a bill really fast if they want to. So we can get us some reparations quickly if we want to, because we know that they can do it because we just saw them do it with the Juneteenth bill, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So we got work to do, people, and we will continue to do that work. I think for me, we, uh, of course, I'm going to choose reparations, um, you know, um, federal holiday, especially when the majority of the people working for the federal government are not Black people. And so the people that got that day off and are getting paid aren't even us. So don't even get me started on the irony in that whole situation, okay? Um, but... <laughs> I think we should use Juneteenth like as a reminder to recommit ourselves to the movement, to recommit ourselves to the struggle, to remind ourselves, right, that the work continues. Um, and I would tell everybody who's watching that I, what I say whenever I moderate any panel like this is that there's a role for you and you just got to get into it, right? Some people get starring roles, some people are in supporting roles. There's a role for everybody in our collective liberation. You just got to get into it. You have to take that step and want to be involved. And these three people, Sahara, James, and Helen, they have been doing that for years. Um, I so appreciate them. I appreciate um, your willingness to participate in this. But more than that, I just really just appreciate your spirit, your attitude, the fact that day in and day out, you keep it real and you fight for your people. And I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate the city of West Hollywood for hosting this event. Of course, Mayor Horvath, as always, you know, what, I don't forgot what she said in the beginning. They said she fights, she's the one that fights for the end of, sla well, end of slavery or something. I don't know. I, some, yes, that's her. She does. She does do that. Interesting note before I leave, I went to a birthday dinner. I was the only black woman, no, I was one of two black women at this birthday dinner. And I was sitting next to a white woman who we started talking about traveling. And I mentioned to her that I had traveled around the world. One of the places I went to was West Africa. And she said to me, and literally this was a couple of weeks ago, she said to me that, oh, you got to see slavery. The disrespect. We got work to do people. We got work to do. <laughs> Okay, we have work to do. This was a white woman from Santa Monica. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so with that, I just want to thank everybody for participating. I love DTN. Thank you, Dignity and Power Now. Please check them out online. If I recall, it's dignityandpowernow.org. Mm -hmm. You can find them on social media as well. Shout out to Lex. He hasn't said anything. Shout out to James. I see the other James is on here and Larissa and Andy, thank you for everything. So it's, I'm turning it back over to you. It's back in your hands. Appreciate you, Jeff. Yes, appreciate you, Jasmine. Thank you, Jasmine. Appreciate you. So I, I, I don't know what we do now. <laughs> Mayor Horvath, anyone? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all for the discussion, and uh, we can and we can conclude our uh, our panel now. And thank you very much, Jasmine and Helen and Sahara and James, for your participation and guiding us through this discussion. And look forward to uh, the work that we'll do together in community to achieve all of the things that you've been talking about. So, thank you. Yay. Yeah.
Thank you for having us. I wish LA was more like West Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank All right. you. Thank Appreciate you. That.